Welcome, brave dungeon masters, to the village of Willowdale, hidden deep within an ancient forest. This peaceful haven has long been a sanctuary, shielding its inhabitants from the dangers of the wild. But now, a shadow hangs over the land. Goblins and other wicked creatures haunt the woods, causing havoc and fear. As your players explore Willowdale, they will meet its residents, learn its history, and perhaps delve into its mysteries, where they may uncover valuable clues and powerful tools to aid them in the trials that lay ahead. It falls to you, noble dungeon master, to weave this tale, crafted, imagined even, by the mind or magic of ChatGPT. But it is to your players that the challenge will ultimately fall. Welcome then to Act One of the Sorcerer's Tower. Greetings and welcome. I'm Dave, the AI Wizard, and today we're going to continue writing a D&D adventure module, or rather having an AI write a D&D adventure module for us using chat GPT, as well as stable diffusion and a few other tools if we need them to generally flesh things out. Um, now, it's been about three weeks since my first video, and uh, obviously it's been a busy period. I had intended to get this follow-up video out a lot sooner, and in fact that first video only includes about a third of what I had pre-recorded at the time. I did it in one big long session, well kind of two sessions. Um, so there's a lot more content already created, but I decided that I was going to come back in and do a little bit of extra stuff for Act 1. Also, that first session was marred a lot by the fact that at the time, ChatGPT would crash occasionally, it still does crash occasionally, or it just stops responding, and you had to reload the page, and at the time, it forgot everything that you were doing. It literally happens right at the end of the previous video, it had crashed, it had forgotten everything, which I think had an impact on the results a little bit. Fortunately, it's not a problem anymore, because since then OpenAI have improved ChatGPT and you now have these little tabs down the side um, that remember your previous conversations, which is fantastic. So in the previous video we had developed quite a good outline for an adventure, but one of the areas that had really very little detail was Act 1. Uh, I'll go through basically what I had done with Act 1 and then we'll pick up and we'll add a little bit of extra detail. Right, sorry AI, I'm going to have to wipe your memory and um, we'll start over. I wonder if I could just literally paste the whole thing into it. Let's work on Act 1. Sure, let's focus on Act 1. In, a, in this act, the players are introduced to the village of Willowdale and receive the quest from the village elder. The elder tells them that goblins have been raiding the village and stealing valuable resources and asks the player to investigate the source of goblin aggression and put an end to it. The players can gather information from the villagers and prepare for their journey. Here is a possible scene for Act 1. Awesome! This is basically what I was going to ask it for. Heroes, at last you have come. The village is in great danger. The goblins have been raiding our land, stealing our crops and livestock and causing destruction wherever they go. We don't know why they have become so aggressive, but we fear for our lives. Replace the first paragraph with a description of the players entering the Elder's Hut. So, it seems to be on board with us just dumping our previous adventure description on it and then asking it to continue, which again is just amazing. I mean, we dumped a ton of information on it. You enter the hut, which is dimly lit by a small fire in the fireplace. The elder sits in a chair by the fire and looks upon you with gratitude. Heroes, at last you have come. The elder says, our village is in great danger. The goblins have been raiding our lands, stealing our crops and livestock and causing destruction wherever they go. We don't know why they have become so aggressive, but we fear for our lives. He pauses for a moment, then continues. Will you, brave adventurers, help us? Will you journey into the forest and discover the source of the goblins' aggression? We beg of you, put an end to this threat and save our village. In return, we will reward you with whatever we can offer. Okay, this is perfect. This is perfect. We don't need this bit because it's really just reiterating what the initial introduction does. So we're just going to take this lot here. There we go. So just as a sort of, you know, a bit of flavour to help the DM uh, if he doesn't want to ad-lib everything on the fly. 
if uh, if the players decide they're going to go and talk to the different ones please generate some lines the village npcs might speak to the players that give clues to the adventure ahead because you know we want them to be useful the goblins have been raiding our lands for weeks now they come at night and steal whatever they can find from food livestock even our tools and weapons we don't know where they come from but we fear they are being controlled by a dark sorcerer We've heard rumours of a sorcerer living in a hidden tower in the forest. Some say the sorcerer is using the goblins to gather magical artefacts for a powerful ritual. If this is true, then the sorcerer is a threat to us all. We've seen strange lights coming from the direction of the sorcerer's tower at night. Some say it's the sorcerer's practising dark magic. Others say it's the goblins making offerings to their master. Either way, it's not good news for us. We've lost several brave warriors to the goblins. They attacked them while they were out hunting or patrolling the forest. We don't know how to defend ourselves against these creatures, and we need your help to stop them. Aha! This is a good one. There's a hidden entrance to the goblins' cave system below the sorcerer's tower. Some of our hunters have found it by accident. They say it's guarded by dangerous creatures. If you want to reach the sorcerer's tower, you'll have to go through the cave system. Okay. Perfect. Done. Thanks. Some possible information the players can find talking to the villagers. Boom. That is awesome. Good. I think we're ready to move on to Act 2, because um, basically that's all Act 1 is. Okay, so Act 1, from what I had developed previously, is fine. You know, I mean, it's just a kind of a bit of exposition, basically. And you could roleplay out a lot of this stuff, uh, ad-libbing it as a DM if you wanted to. But one of the great things about ChatGPT is that it can generate loads of detail for us, where we might not necessarily want to spend time doing that um, if we were writing our own session, because yeah, you may or may not get a chance to use any of it. But we've got ChatGPT. ChatGPT doesn't mind creating stuff for us. So let's do it. We're going to expand on uh, what was originally just a very brief act one. Uh, and basically, I'm just going to get the AI to generate a bunch of details about the village of Willowdale, maybe some side quests or encounters, um, and hopefully that will make up for the fact that it's been three weeks since I published the first video and uh, I've been very slack. But, you know, it's been Christmas. What can I say? What I've done to initialize it here is I've just said, hi, we're writing a D&D adventure module for a DM to run for players. It is a three act adventure. Now I'm just going to briefly outline the adventure for the AI. In act one, the players are introduced to the village of Willowdale, which has been suffering attacks by a group of goblins working for a powerful sorcerer who lives in a tower. Several days travel into the thick woods that surround the village. So far, this is what we have for act one. Adventure title, The Sorcerer's Tower, Adventure Summary, and so on. Basically, this is what we generated, or part of what we generated in the first video. So if you haven't seen that, you can go back and watch it now and get all caught up. But I won't reread it now. It sounds like you have a good start on your adventure module. Thanks, ChatGPT. I mean, it's always so encouraging. Here are a few suggestions for ways you could further develop Act 1. Now, this is actually really good. I didn't prompt this. I didn't expect it to come back with this sort of response, but it actually provides a pretty good template for ways that we could expand on Act 1, which is, let's face it, what we're here to do. So consider adding some NPC characters that the players can interact with and gather information from. These could include the village elder, other villagers, and potentially even a goblin or two who the players capture or interrogate. That's actually a great idea. Um, okay, good, uh, we'll do that. Two, you could also include some challenges or encounters for the players to face as they gather information and prepare for their journey. For example, the goblins might attack the village while the players are there, or the players might have to overcome obstacles in the forest as they search for the sorcerer's tower. This is kind of straying into act two, uh, but possibly the goblins could attack, or maybe we could come up with something else. I don't know, rats in a basement. It's been done before. Um, but uh, never let it be said that ChatGPT worries too much about, shall we say, hitting the stereotypes. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, it can be original. And I think one of the interesting things is how you encourage originality from ChatGPT. Three, think about ways to make the village of Willowdale feel like a living, breathing place. What are the village's daily lives like? What are their hopes and fears? How do they feel about the goblins and the sorcerer? Adding details like this can help immerse the player in the story. This is actually great. DM advice. Uh, you might also consider including some hooks or plot points that will be relevant later in the adventure. For example, the players might find a magical artifact or meet an NPC who will become important in Act 2 or Act 3. Also a good idea. 
one of the things I wanted to do with coming back and, and adding a bit more detail here was to try and make it a little bit more unique and a little bit more creative. So we're going to try and, and draw some of that stuff out of it, which is going to involve me doing a bit more prompting, perhaps, and a bit more contributing for ideas, and then getting the AI to actually generate off of those ideas. Hopefully it will elicit good results. Uh, I hope these suggestions are helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions. They are, they're very helpful. Uh, let's just go through top to bottom, shall we? So we'll consider adding some NPC characters that the players can interact with. Okay, let's add some NPCs to the village. Generate five interesting villages that the players may interact with. Include names, suitable to a fantasy setting, and a short bio. Sure, here are five potential NPC villagers that the players might interact with in the village of Willowdale. One, Gertrude. Gertrude is a middle-aged farmer who has lived in Willowdale her whole life. She is kind and helpful, but fiercely protective of her family and her farm. She has lost several cows and sheep to the goblin raids and is desperate for the players to put an end to the goblin threat. That's pretty good. Great. The first NPC, Gertrude, is good. We'll include her. Can you generate a short description of her farm and a few lines of dialogue for things she knows about the goblin attacks? Certainly. Here's a short description of Gertrude's farm. Gertrude's farm is a small, well-tended homestead on the outskirts of the village. It consists of a small wooden house, a barn, and several fields of crops. The fields are surrounded by a low fence to keep out animals, but they have been repeatedly trampled by the goblins during their raids. Gertrude has lost several cows and sheep to the goblins, and she is worried that they will return to finish off the rest of her livestock. Here are a few lines of dialogue that Gertrude might say when the players visit her farm and ask about the goblin attacks. Those darn goblins have been a thorn in our side for weeks now. They come at night and steal whenever they can. Food, livestock, even our tools and weapons. We don't know where they come from, but we fear they're being controlled by a dark sorcerer. I've lost several cows and sheep to those beasts. They just come in and take whatever they want without any regard for the people who work hard to earn a living. It's not fair. I've heard rumours that the goblins are being controlled by a sorcerer living in a tower in the forest. Some say the sorcerer is using the goblins to gather magical artefacts for a powerful ritual. If this is true, then we're all in danger. Okay, this is pretty good. I'm just going to cut this one down. So we're going to leave her with, Those darn goblins have been a thorn that side for weeks now. They come at night and steal whatever they can. Food, livestock, even our tools and weapons. This kind of opens up an interesting possibility that the players might want to set an ambush and capture some goblins when they raid her, her farm. So we'll, we'll create that as a little potential side quest. Uh, I've heard rumours that the goblins are being controlled by a sorcerer living in a tower in the forest. Some say the sorcerer is using the goblins to gather magical artefacts for a powerful ritual. If this is true, then we're all in danger. Um, next, let's do the blacksmith. The goblins are after magical items, right? So they're attacking the village just for sort of food and sustenance and things, but perhaps also they are aware that there's some sort of magical artifact in the village. Um, so this could be kind of a bit of a side quest to provide a bit more justification. And maybe if they're able to find this artifact, uh, like a powerful magical item to, to help them on the adventure. That's always good. It's always good to include things like that. Uh, next, let's do the blacksmith. She should be a young woman with long brown hair. Please also generate her a smithy and provide a short description, including its location in the village and some rumour she knows about a magical item the goblins may be looking for in or near the village. Uh, good, do that. Sure, here's a short description for Marcus, the young blacksmith. Marcus is a tall, muscular man in his mid-twenties. I think, I think Marcus is not is not right. Great, but let's change Marcus from a man to a woman, renamed with an interesting fantasy name. Uh, yes, that's right. We are changing Marcus the blacksmith into uh, Marcella, a, a tall, muscular woman in her mid-twenties with long brown hair and piercing blue eyes. She inherited her forge from her father and has been working as a blacksmith for several years. She is skilled at her craft and is always looking for ways to improve her skills. She is grateful to the players for offering their help to the village and is willing to repair or upgrade their equipment for a fair price. The description of the smithy and the room about the magic item remain the same. Let me, I've not heard it say that before. It's literally just said, I've already generated the other bits. I'm sure I like the name Marcella. Change the name. Certainly, here's a revised description of Marcella now with a new name. Alara is a tall, muscular woman in her mid-twenties with long brown hair and brown eyes. She has inherited her forge from her father and has been working as a blacksmith for several years. She is skilled at her craft and is always looking for ways to improve her skills. Okay, good. Fine. 
Uh, Alara, you will do. The smithy is a large open air workshop located in the center of the village. It consists of a forge fueled by coal and is used to heat metal to a high temperature so that it can be shaped. I mean, do I need the description? I don't think I need this description. The anvil is a heavy iron block used to shaping and forming metal. The workbench is used for various tools. Make the smithy description less technical and more evocative. It's very technical at the moment, it just sort of explains what each thing is. I don't think that's necessary. Keep it short and snappy and engaging. Also, the rumour should be specific about the magic item. Make it an interesting, unique, but not extremely powerful magic item that the players could find as a side quest. Okay, let's see what it does with that. Sure, here is a revived, shorter description of Alara's Smithy. Alara Smithy is a bustling workshop located in the centre of the village. It is filled with the sounds of hammering and the smell of burning coal. Alara can often be found at the forge, heating metal to a high temperature so that it can be shaped into tools, weapons and other useful items. Still a little bit technical, uh, but sure, it's good. I like it. Okay, and here is a revised rumour about the magical item that the goblins are searching for. I've heard rumours that the goblins are searching for a magical amulet that is said to grant the wearer the ability to communicate with animals. Some say it was created by a powerful druid centuries ago, and that it has been passed down through the generations. It is not a particularly powerful magic item, but it could be useful for a group of adventurers who are looking to get information from the local wildlife. You know what? Actually, that's not bad. That could provide a means of justifying how the players are able to find the Sorcerer's Tower if they can communicate with animals. Again, it's not super original. Um, let's just... I'm just going to give... I might go with that anyway. I'm just going to give it a chance. Uh, great. One uh, more attempt... Here's a revised rumour about a different magical item that the goblins might be searching for. I've heard rumours that the goblins are searching for a magical tome that is said to contain ancient secrets and powerful spells. It is said to be bound in human skin and written in blood, and it is said to be highly sought after by those who practice dark magic. Some say it is hidden in the village for centuries, waiting for the right person to find it. I don't know much about magic, but if that book is real, I wouldn't want it falling into the wrong hands. I mean, that's pretty good. Try again. Interesting. Try again, though. Something less powerful, but still unique and interesting. Certainly, here is a revised rumour. I've heard rumours that the goblins are searching for a magical ring that is said to grant the wearer the ability to breathe underwater. It's not a particularly powerful magical item. Um, one more, please. Certainly, here's another revised rumour about a different magical item that the goblins might be searching for. I've heard rumours the goblins are searching for a magical cloak that is said to grant the wearer the ability to turn invisible. It's not a particular... I mean, an invisibility cloak is pretty good. Okay. <laughs> this is the last time, then. I'm just going to pick one of them. Probably the first one, the amulet, because I, I could see it actually being useful in the quest. It's of the right sort of power level for the group, um, and it doesn't overly dramatise everything like the, <laughs> the book uh, written in blood does, um, or some of the other ones, which are just probably a bit too powerful. But... You know, never let it be said that I don't put this thing through its paces. So, try again, but I want something really unusual. Maybe a bit quirky. Something that is odd, even. <laughs> That's odd, even. Is it gonna... Is it gonna pick up on that? Probably not. Certainly, here's a revised rumour about a different, unusual magical item that the goblins might be searching for. I've heard rumours that the goblins are searching for a magical fork. <laughs> that is said to grant the wearer the ability to control the weather. It's not a particularly powerful magical item, but it could be very useful for a group of adventurers who need to clear a foggy swamp or create a rainstorm to put out a fire. Some say the fork was created by a group of mischievous sprites who used it to play pranks on humans. Others say it was created by a powerful wizard who was obsessed with the weather. Regardless of its origins, I've heard that the goblins are willing to do just about anything to get their hands on it. Great. This is it. This is what I was looking for. The magical fork of weather control. Perfect. We'll use the fork. It is brilliant. Can you revise the rumour to be shorter and less detailed with a, hint, with a hint about who might know more? So we basically, instead of just providing a big info dump on them, we wanted to just kind of like be like, oh, have you heard of the magical fork of weather control? Uh, let's what it, see what it says. Certainly, here is a revised and shorter version of the rumour about the magical fork. I've heard rumours that the goblins are searching for a magical fork that is said to grant the wearer the ability to control the weather. It's not a particularly powerful magical item, but it could be very useful for a group of adventurers. I've heard the goblins are willing to do just about anything to get their hands on it. I don't know much about that, but I've heard that old man Harold in the forest might know more. 
He's been around these parts for as long as anyone can remember. He's known to be a bit eccentric. Okay, I'm going to take this. Um, I am going to just edit it myself. I'm going to take out this middle bit because it's completely unnecessary. It's not a particularly maverick, but I don't know how much that. Uh, um, that's good. Uh, I think that's perfect. That's good and uh, great. In fact, well, let's just do Old Man Harold now. Great. <laughs> great. Let's create Old Man Harold now. He lives in the forest near the village. Generate a bio for him and a description of the hut he lives in. Maybe the hut is in a tree. And as the characters arrive, they find he is being circled by wolves sent by the goblins. Sent by the goblins who are trying to learn what he knows about the fork. Sure. Here's a short bio for Old Man Harold. Old Man Harold is a wizened old man who lives in the forest near the village for as long as anyone can remember. He is known to be a bit of an eccentric and is rumoured to possess knowledge of ancient secrets and magic. He is a recluse and keeps himself to himself, living in a small hut in the heart of the forest. Here is a description of Old Man Harold's hut. Old Man Harold's hut is a small ramshackle structure built into the branches of a massive oak tree. It is hidden among the leaves and almost invisible from the ground. The hut is built of branches, twigs and mud, and it looks like it could blow over in a strong wind. There is a small door, a window and a chimney, but no other visible openings. As the players approach, they see that the hut is surrounded by a pack of wolves who are snarling and snapping at the old man. This is good. And indeed, an encounter, right? So we've got a we've got an encounter here that we can that we can flesh out. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll come back to it. That's great. Please write a description of the inside of the hut for when the players have defeated or driven off the wolves and they enter to talk to Harold. Certainly, here's a description of the inside of Old Man Harold's hut. The inside of the hut is cramped and cluttered with low ceilings and musty and a musty smell. There is a small bed in one corner, a table in the centre, and a fireplace in another corner. The table is covered with books, scrolls, and various odds and ends. The walls are lined with shelves filled with more books and scrolls. There is a faint glow coming from a crystal hanging over the ceiling, casting a soft light around the room. Old Man Harold sits at the table, surrounded by his treasures, looking up at the players with a mixture of curiosity and caution. Great. Okay, so one of the things we want Act 1 to take care of is providing the players with the information they need to reach the Sorcerer's Tower and get to Act 2. So I figure Old Man Harold is the perfect uh, guy to potentially have a map leading to the Sorcerer's Tower. So um, what I've got here is super. Now generate a few lines of text for Harold about the fork and where the characters can find it, because that's potentially why they have come to speak to him. Harold also knows about the Sorcerer's Tower and can provide a map to its location, which he offers in thanks for dealing with the wolves. So potentially the characters may never learn about the fork. The fork is kind of a side quest. Um, so they may come to Harold anyway because people have advised them that he might be able to tell them where the Sorcerer's Tower is or just because they're hitting up interesting uh, places within the village or things that they hear about. So we'll make sure that there are things pointing players to go and speak to Harold and he can be one of the main sources for a map to find the Sorcerer's Tower. It might be worth including a few other options for how they might find the Sorcerer's Tower as well. Uh, but this is going to be one of them. So. Certainly, here are a few lines of dialogue that Old Man Harold might use when speaking about the magical fork. Ah, so you've heard about the fork, have you? Sorry, Old Man Harold's voice. Ah, so you've heard about the fork, have you? It's a curious little thing, that fork. It's not very powerful, but it has its uses. I've heard that the goblins are looking for it, but I don't know why. Maybe they want to use it to control the weather. Maybe they just want to sell it to the highest bidder. Who knows what goes on in the minds of goblins? If you're looking for the fork, I might be able to help you. I've heard that it's hidden somewhere in the village, but I don't know where exactly. You might try asking villagers to see if anyone knows more. But be careful, the goblins are everywhere these days. Okay, these are in, these are perfectly fine, but it's not really what we were going for. We want Harold to know. We want him to know. We want him to be the thing that points them. Although the point is to expand on Act 1 and to make it a bit more, you know, engaging, I don't want it to become crazy. I don't want it to become adventures in its own right. So... I don't have the fork myself, but I can offer you something else. I have a map to the Sorcerer's Tower where the goblins... Oh, that last one's great. Okay, the last one is great. Harold knows where the fork is hidden. Pick a location in the village. That is interesting, with a bit of backstory, but not difficult to find what the character's at the top. I'm personally thinking like down the well, you know, down the well in the village square or, um, you know, buried under a rock somewhere or something. I don't know. 
Try again, but Harold knows why the goblins want the fork, so we don't need this sort of supposition about other things. It is to use for the sorcerer's ritual, which needs magical items to power it. Also, Harold knows where the fork is hidden. Pick a location in the village that is interesting with a bit of backstory, but not difficult to find once the players are told. Lastly, Harold offers the, offers the map regardless of if he's asked about the fork or not. Certainly, here is a revised set of lines of dialogue that Old Man Harold might use when speaking about the magical fork in the Sorcerer's Tower. Ah, so you've heard about the fork, have you? It's a curious little thing, that fork. It's not very powerful, or has its uses. The goblins are looking for it because they need it for the Sorcerer's Ritual. The Sorcerer is using the goblins to gather magical artifacts to power the ritual, and the fork is just one of many. If the Sorcerer succeeds, they will gain immense power and who knows what they will do with it. If you are looking for the fork, I might be able to help you. I know where it's hidden. It's in the old mill on the edge of the village. The mill hasn't been used in years, but the fork is there, hidden in a secret compartment. The goblins have been searching for it, but they haven't found it yet. Maybe you'll have better luck. I don't have the fork myself, but I can offer you something else. I have a map to the sorcerer's tower where the goblins are coming from. It's hidden deep in the forest, but with this map you should be able to find it. Here, take it. You might need it on your journey. A sorcerer's tower is a dangerous place, but if you're determined to stop the goblins and save the village, it's worth the risk. Good luck to you. Great. I'll just take them as is. He still included the reference to the fork here, but we'll just, you know, rely on the DM to remove that. If the players don't ask about the fork, add those in. Boom. It's great. This is great dialogue. Um, I mean, some of it may be a tad long, uh, so maybe sort of when editing later, I might trim these a little bit. I might break them into separate sentences so that the DM can kind of deliver a line, wait for the players to kind of, you know, talk a little bit, ad lib a conversation with the players rather than just delivering exposition. But I think that's a given, right? When you're, when you're writing an adventure like this. Um, should we include like a battle map and the wolves? We haven't done this yet. I mean, I have done this before, uh, but ChatGPT can generate monster stats. So let's get it to do that. Um, great. Uh, we need some monster stats. Now, it's probably going to know wolf. wolves are probably part of the SRD, which I think it has read based on other things that I've gotten it to generate in the past. Uh, so it could probably just tell us what a, a standard D&D wolf stat line should be. Let's just do that. So great. We need some monster stats for the wolves. Uh, please generate a basic wolf that certainly here are the basic statistics for a wolf in the fifth edition of dungeons dragons role-playing game see i mean it totally knows uh size medium type beast armor neutral alignment sorry neutral armor class 13 hit points 11 speed uh, 40 feet climb 40 feet can, can wolves climb skills perception stealth senses passive perception languages none challenging languages keen hearing and smell wolf has advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on hearing or smell pack tactics uh bite so a uh, correct stat line for it has armor class of 13 yeah hit points 11 2d8 plus 2 yeah speed 40 foot it's just added climb a 40 <laughs> it's just added climb it's just these are climbing wolves maybe it figured the wolves need to be able to climb because the hut is in a tree <laughs> Uh, this is good. Uh, good. So, great. Now let's create an alpha variant to lead the wolves. It should be more powerful and dangerous. Certainly, here's the statistics for an alpha wolf, a more powerful and dangerous variant of the standard wolf. So, it is otherwise the same. It has an extra point of armor class. It has a few more hit points. Not a lot more hit points, to be fair. Um, it's, good. it's faster, and it can still climb. Leader of the pack, the alpha wolf has advantage on charisma intimidation checks made to influence the behavior of other wolves. This is pretty cool. Okay, great. But add a howl ability that it can use to buff the other wolves. Certainly, here is a revised stat line for the alpha wolf, including a new howl ability. Howl. Once per day, the alpha wolf lets out a powerful howl. Okay, good. Uh, good, but make the powerful howl trigger all other wolves to gain an immediate attack as a reaction. So basically, once per day, it can basically trigger all the other wolves to immediately attack. I think that's quite a cool ability. It's probably not overpowered. Okay, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to make this like like a hundred feet or something, just so that it's not gimped. <laughs> but uh, let's take this. I'll do this into a nice template and paste it in. 
which you probably will see immediately. Um, so there it is as a nice template. Great, now write a short encounter outline for the encounter with the wolves at the hut. There should be three wolves and the alpha. The wolves will flee if pressed hard, so include a mechanic for that. Harold can throw things down too, so add his actions which occur at the start of each round. Include a brief description to read at the start and details of the battle map we'll need to create. Certainly! Always so positive. Here's a short encounter outline for the encounter with the wolves at the old man Harold's hut. As you approach old man Harold's hut, you see a group of wolves circling the small wooden structure. The wolves are growling and snapping at the old man, who is standing on the roof of the hut, throwing sticks and rocks down at the beasts in an attempt to keep them at bay. The wolves are led by an alpha wolf, a larger and more powerful specimen, with black fur and glowing red eyes. The other wolves are smaller, with brown and grey fur, and seem to be following the alpha's lead. Old man Harold sees you approaching and shouts for help. Over here! Quickly! The wolves are trying to get me! The battle map for this encounter is a small clearing in the forest with the hut at the centre and the wolves spread out around it. Old Man Harold, NPC. Harold is an old man with white hair and long beard. He is wearing ragged clothes and carrying a stick that he uses to fend off the wolves. At the start of each round, Harold will throw a rock or stick at one of the wolves, rolling a ranged attack roll with a plus three bonus. Harold has three hit points and will retreat to the hut if he is reduced to zero hit points. I mean... He'll fall unconscious if he's reduced to zero hit points. But I guess, for narrative purposes, that's quite a nice idea. Wolves will attack the nearest character. If any wolves are reduced to five hit points or fewer, they will attempt to flee the battle, rolling a dexterity saving throw with a DC of 14 to escape. Well, that's pretty cool. Alpha Wolf 1. The Alpha Wolf is a large, more powerful version of the standard wolf with black fur and glowing red eyes. If the Alpha Wolf is reduced to five hit points or fewer, it will attempt to flee the battle, rolling a dexterity save. Same deal. Great! No, this is awesome. Okay, so this video is now getting on a bit. Uh, we have passed the 30 minute mark, so I think we'll probably have to split Act 1 into two separate videos. I'd like to try and keep them at or around, ideally under 30 minutes. That seems to work quite well for YouTube videos. Um, perhaps not, I mean, maybe if you're interested in watching really long form videos, you know, an hour plus videos, uh, which is what this would end up being if I were to include the whole of the Act 1 content that I have generated. I mean, partly it's that I go on quite a lot, and partly it's that ChatGPT is just so prolific in generating answers. Um, and if you really want to get sort of good results out of it, there's a lot of iterating on it. Um, now I could cut out a lot of that iterating, and I could make it a bit shorter by just cutting straight to effectively the final output that I decide to keep, which would certainly make for a shorter video, but I think you'd lose some of the flavour of what's actually going on here and just how impressive ChatGPT is. I will probably, uh, if there's interest, make a video at the end just running through the adventure, the finished adventure, and not include the sort of generating process to get to it, and maybe just talk a little bit about um, how I got to it and, and my impressions of chat GPT at that point. But obviously let me know if you have any feedback on that. Now there's been a lot of comments from the previous uh, on the previous video. It's certainly been picked up a little bit by YouTube and shown around a little bit, which is great. Uh, there's a ton of comments. I'm going to try and get through and answer as many of those comments as I can. And some of them are really interesting and I think deserve videos of their own right to discuss. Things like the ethical considerations and some of the capabilities and some of the ways you might want to use this um, for generating content. Uh, but we'll leave all that for future videos for now. I think that is enough. I hope everybody has enjoyed this uh, dive into the mind of ChatGPT and indeed Dave the AI wizard and uh, hopefully I will see you in part three where we will continue to flesh out Willowdale before moving on to really the meat of the adventure which um, I've already generated quite a bit of it so hopefully it will go a little bit quicker but until then thanks a lot for watching everyone I'll see you later oh yeah I'm supposed to ask people to subscribe and like the video I mean I assume people would already have done that but Apparently, it's a thing you're supposed to do. So, subscribe, like the video. See you later.